guys welcome back to my channel in this video i'm going to be telling you guys about how i came to study in korea and how you can too if that's something you are looking into hi guys and welcome back to my channel if you're new here hi my name is ho so in this video i wanted to share with you guys how i came to south korea because many of you guys asked me to make a video about it or have many questions about you know how i came to south korea because I, I didn't find a lot of information about coming from uganda to south korea so i hope that this video actually has enough information to help you figure out like how to go about the whole thing in case you know studying in korea is something you are looking into yeah okay so a little introduction my name is Hope. I have been in Korea for about four years now. It's coming to five years. I came to Korea in 2018 and I'm doing my bachelor's. I do a bachelor's in software engineering and in my fourth year, I hope to graduate next year. So coming to Korea, I did a language course first. It was compulsory for me to do a language course for one year and then my major my major is four years so i'm studying for a period of five years so you guys so the most asked question is how i came to korea and the short answer is i got a scholarship i got a scholarship at the university i am at i am currently studying at Gangnam university so let's go into the whole process um before coming to korea i was studying a bachelor's degree in food science and technology at uganda Kaysen university ucu so i was in my first year and while there i had about this scholarship because ucu has or had i'm not sure if it's still ongoing but there was the the two universities ucu and and then university had a memorandum of understanding which means there would be chance for like you know exchange students from both universities to like go to and from like Gangnam university students could go to uganda even and students could come here i don't know if that ever happened but yeah i read it in the documents that they sent me about the memorandum of understanding so yeah, there was an opportunity like that and also the scholarship opportunities so the scholarship i am currently at is called the shinjan foundation scholarship and it is hosted by this university where i am at so yeah the information they sent that time was announcing the scholarship so i got to know about it i applied and i got it so this is the whole application process that i went through after getting to know about the scholarship, I the scholarship has did it had details about all the documents that I had to prepare, and after that I sent them to the embassy. Actually, I took them, I took them personally to the embassy of South Korea in Uganda. If you don't, if you do not know where that is, it is in Kampala at Turnan Avenue, Fort Fourteen Turnan Avenue. It's that kind of. Kampala Serena Hotel. Yeah, I'm sure if you just type it in Google, like Embassy of the Republic of South Korea in Uganda, it will show up so you can easily, you know, know where to go. So that is the first thing that I did. I submitted my documents via the embassy. I did not post them directly. Yeah, there wasn't an option like that. So after that, I received an email months later i received an email that i had been successful that email also came with documents that could help me apply for my visa because i had to come to korea with a visa okay so what i did about the visa is there was first of all a document the document i got from the embassy so i went to the embassy got the document so the document normally have like what you're going to do there stuff like that the info about the university if you're going to study that is why the school sent me you know all these details all these documents that would help me with my visa so after filling that document i submitted it and paid 
with the fee there is a fee actually for the visa and it does not matter if you will be given if you'll be parted with a visa or not the money is not like refunded to you by that time it was about 50 dollars so I paid that to the bank and then attached the receipt and submitted the documents and then a few days later I got a call to you know go take my passport and then you know they put the visa for me there and I was ready to come to Korea so the visa I got when coming to Korea was actually a Korean language visa the visa you take it's called b4 it's the visa you have when you are studying korean language because i had to study korean language first before i join campus because we have to we have to study in korean like my major is in korean so studying korean is a must and you have to achieve a certain level before you before you are accepted into university this doesn't apply to all universities, so if your major is going to be in English, then it does not matter. Especially master's courses. Most times, master's courses are actually in English, so they normally require you to have an English proficiency test certificate. So in case they do that, then you do not need the Korean language visa most times. You just need the student visa which is B2 so that is technically how I came to South Korea it was a blessing it was something I did not expect really because I really tried looking for scholarships before not only in South Korea actually I never searched for a scholarship in South Korea but I did in other countries like the US in Canada but I hadn't been successful and then this showed up so that's why I also wanted to share with you guys how you can actually, you know, look for scholarships because I know it's hard and you may not even like, no, you may also not know how to go about the whole thing. So I hope that this video is able to answer some of your questions. But the second part of this video is I wanted to talk about how you can come to South Korea. Uh, the easiest way you can come to South Korea, especially as a person from Uganda is coming as a student because there is not a lot of job opportunities that are readily available, especially if you do not know Korean. I personally haven't met a person before that has that is working and they hadn't studied here before and okay there are opportunities to work like you know you can teach english but like nationals from uganda are not legally allowed to teach english that is mainly for countries like the us canada uk new zealand australia and south africa so those are the countries so you may not even if you want to come to korea to you know teach english you may not be able to get a visa for it the easiest way to come to Korea is coming as a student and then, you know, looking for a job after. But we all have like, you know, different experiences and different luck. So in case you ever get a job to, you know, work in South Korea, do not, I hope you do not think that it is not possible. It may be, but I do not think it's impossible. I just I talked to many people really but I haven't gotten someone with that experience so I'm not able to share about it. So in case you ever get an opportunity to work in South Korea, I hope you take it and um, yeah, I just haven't seen it yet. So the next part of this video is how to come to South Korea, how you can come to South Korea. So we're going to talk about how to find the scholarship, the most common scholarship that most international students are on in South Korea is the Global Korea Scholarship, which is a scholarship by the Korean government and they do provide scholarships for Ugandans too. Actually for this scholarship you can apply if you want to study undergraduate, uh, graduate for masters or PhD there are just different application times so i'm going to share with you guys the link to that uh, scholarship
membership in the description box so you just like you know check it out and get more information because of course i'm not able to like share everything in this video but i'm going to go over you know the main points so as i said the current global scholarship <coughs> is available for undergraduate graduate course and phd and if you go to their site you'll see that uh, for undergraduate and graduate that you will see the timeline and for undergraduate the announcement for application is released in september so if you are watching this video i would advise you to like you can check this website next month there will be like all the information that you need to apply if you are looking for an undergraduate scholarship and then for graduate if you're looking for a phd or a masters then the announcement is going to be next year in February. So the GKS, I'm going to be calling it GKS. Um, it covers your tuition, it covers your longer school fees, and it also gives you um, a pretty nice allowance, which is 1 million Korean won. It also covers your medical insurance, it covers a lot of things so if you go to it also covers your airfare so if you go to the website you'll actually see more information about this so this is the most important thing to note about this scholarship um you can apply they have two tracks via which you can apply one is the embassy track and one is the university track so embassy track means you submit all your documents to the embassy and university track means you send your documents directly to the university in korea and what you need to note about the embassy track and which is let me say a pro is that you can apply to three universities so if you don't get university one you can get university two or three and yeah you list your when you get the documents you list your preferred your preferred universities and they'll use those to you know give you a slot why if you if you are admitted to any of those universities the better but <clears throat> once you decide to apply for university track where you send your documents directly to the university that means you can only apply to only one university that means you go through all the universities where this scholarship is hosted and the university that you like most is where you apply that is where you post your documents you can post your documents i think by dhl or fedex but you have to make sure you send those documents before the deadline yeah that is the gks scholarship i hope you guys can apply for it and you know i hope you can get it so in case you guys are wondering about my scholarship like the scholarship i'm at um, unfortunately it's i don't think it's open anymore i don't think they're taking any more students nowadays it's been a while since we got any new students i've not seen any information for the past couple of years i've been wanting to you know recommend people to you know apply for it because it's nice when you have people from the same country at the same school but yeah it's no longer available i don't see any information about you know applications and stuff so i would recommend you you know try the gks scholarship or when in korea actually most universities have scholarships for international students so if you have a university that you are interested in i would recommend that you go to their specific sites and you know check them out check out the page and check out if they have any scholarships because some universities do actually have scholarships where they provide tuition and airfare and they may not provide the visa but they give you um you know monthly stipend so that is pretty fair to work with so i am going to share with you two that i found <coughs> That i know all that you guys can actually apply for so the first university is Gwangju institute of science and technology which is i think one of korea's best 
science universities like it's good so you can go to the site and you will find like scholarships that this university hosts also link it you know in the description box for you guys to try and so number two it's called UNIST which is the Ulsan National Institute of Science and Technology yeah they also provide they also give you like full tuition and they also give you a stipend which is pretty fair although it's not like very generous like the GKS scholarship that I talked about earlier this is also a very good scholarship that you know you can try out so if you are actually not uh, looking for if you aren't into science and technology and are looking for scholarships in other fields I know IHWA has scholarships that you can you know check out I'll also put a link in the description to the you know university page because I know it may be hard to find but if there is any school that you have heard about in Korea that you are interested in and you like I would advise that you do some research go on to their homepage and look at what they have to offer in case there is a scholarship so some schools offer something like 70% 30% or something of a scholarship so if you can pay for yourself the remaining percentage then that is also a good deal so yeah it's also possible for you to come to korea as your own sponsor just that for that when you are applying to the embassy for a visa you may need to show your bank statement that this is the amount of money i have in my bank right now you have to show that you are able to support yourself for the period of time that you are going to be studying so that is something you should put in mind before you apply you have to show bank statement you have to have money on your account yeah also if you are coming from uganda i would recommend that you come with a new passport you know the esc passport because we do not have an embassy in korea so that means if you come with the old passport if you come with the old passport though i'm not sure that's possible but in case you didn't change your passport yet it's better to you know change it first before you come otherwise it may you know be a bit messy for you because you may not get time to go back to uganda or it may be expensive you know stuff happens so it's better for you to come ready so that you do not have any distractions along the way I hope this video has been very helpful to you guys in case you have any more questions or something i have not talked about in this video please leave it in the comment section and i'll be glad to you know help you out if i have the information yeah thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye